gonna do it again. Do it again. He's gonna do it again. Yes, he is. Revival is coming. Well, can't you hear the rain? Well, it's about to fall on you right now. Woo! Lift up those hands and praise the Lord. It's coming down. And he's coming down. Brother John here. Welcome to Revival Hour. Well, you know, we have another good program. It's getting gooder, and I don't know if there's a word, uh, gooder. It's getting better, and better, and better, and better. And I'm really excited because what I'm going to be sharing today is something that the Spirit of the Living God gave me this week to confirm everything that I've been saying for so long. And if you've been following this program, you'll realize today by the chapter that I'm going to be uh, uh, sharing today, it will confirm everything that Brother John has been saying for the past few months about the state of the church and what we need to do and, and all of that good stuff. But before I go into the Word, I, I want to remind you that um, on uh, January the 5th, uh, it's been confirmed. Please follow us on Facebook. Go to Facebook. If you're not following us, and go to revivalhour.ca. Our page will come up. Uh, click follow and like us, and then uh, you'll be part of all the announcements that we have. So January the 5th is being confirmed. We're going back and renting the facilities there on 2187, Lori Utech, St. John's Anglican Church. And then the week after that, the 13th, um, we're going to be starting the School of Discipleship. And uh, we're calling it The Church. And we're going to be committing 2019 unto the Lord. We're going to have different leaders share every hour. It's going to be from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, I wanted to do it longer, but we'll see how it goes. Right now, that's the plan. So we have a book to ready for that time. And uh, so anyway, so Sunday nights, starting January the 13th, is going to be from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you don't want to miss the big one. The first one, that's going to be the big one. God is going to move in that night in such a way you're going to hear a lot of advertising on the radio about it. And, um, and that's the School of Discipleship. No charge. We'll be taking up an offering at every meeting. So, uh, you know, if somebody cannot afford it, a lot of people will charge you a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for this kind of thing that is going to go probably for about 20 weeks. Uh, I'm going to probably take about two Sundays, maybe three. And other pastors and leaders will will uh, speak as well and teach. And, and the whole vision is to equip the body of Christ. If, Ephesians chapter 4. So you don't want to miss this. So January the 5th, CDY Pray Meeting. 10 o'clock until 3 o'clock at St. John's Anglican Church. And then a school of discipleship. We have a permanent location now uh, in Joseph Howey. At the same James Anglican Church. Humongous building. We can fit about 400 people there. So we have a book for the next couple of years. I tell you if we need to. And that is every Sunday night from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. So anyway, as you know, last week it was a powerful message regarding revivals. Looking at the, at the revivals of the past and the, re, and, the, and the revivals that we're looking for now. So, you know, the scripture that I brought to you is one of them is that the latter rain will be better than the former rain. And why was the former rain not effective? Why did it not last? Why it became just a, a, a memory or a history that we look back at the Welsh revival, at the Argentina revival, at the, uh, all of these kind of revivals that took place in the past years and centuries, actually from way back. How come they didn't continue? So the whole thought of that was because we missed the boat. You see, the reason that a visitation of God comes is for us to, to uh, obey the Word of God. And what is to obey the Word of God? God has called us to make disciples. You see, our churches must be filled with disciples. Because disciples make disciples. And disciples is what takes over a nation. It's not Christians, but it's disciples. Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. So that's the thing, that's the reason I believe with all my heart that revivals don't last. It's because we build our own ministry. Then we be, begin to exalt men. Oh, how was we that? I tell you, the Spirit of God is not here to exalt men, but the Spirit of the living God came to earth to exalt Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. 
and to lift him up. Because the Bible says that if he is lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. So and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Antichrist. And uh, this, I believe, is a revelation from the Word of God again. And, uh, and I tell you, I'm a different preacher. You know, I, I, I preach, you know, Jesus says, you know, I only do what I see the Father do. I am similar. I only say what I believe the Spirit of God is telling me. So, I mean, for, for this scripture, I know it was in the Bible, but I just didn't connect it. But when the Spirit of God gave me this scripture and I posted a little bit on the uh, on Facebook, I was able to understand that this is the direction of the Lord. So, I'm, we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want you to study the whole book of uh, Thessalonians, but especially the chapter 2. Because here is going to confirm a lot of things that I've been talking about. And uh, let's start with verse uh, 2. It says, Not to be quickly and settle or alarm either by so-called prophetic revelation of a spirit or a message or a letter uh, from us to the fact that the day of the Lord has already come. So here is, you know, beginning to warn people not to be so caught up in prophetics and letters and all of these things talking about the future. And then he says in verse 3, let no one in any way deceive you or entrap you. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first in the end times. And I believe that we're living in the, the end times. So what is the word of God talking about here? That is the great rebellion. The abandonment, listen to this, of the faith by professed Christians. So that means that Christians will abandon the faith. Uh, what kind of Christians? Professing Christians. Those that tell people that they're Christians. <laughs> oh my God. You see, it doesn't say disciples here. Because disciples never leave. <laughs> disciples have a mission from God. Disciples make disciples. And that's how they take over a nation. So he says, by professed Christians, and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction, who? The Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. Or repeat that at me. The Antichrist is destined to be destroyed. And then in uh, verse 4, he says, who opposes and exalt himself, and we see that happening. You see, everybody's looking for a man to show up in this world. Everybody's looking for a man to show up in the world called the Antichrist. Well, but the Bible talks about the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist has been around for ages, for a long, long time. And one of the goals of the spirit of Antichrist is exactly what he says. Anti-Christ against Christ to remove Christ from our homes, from our from our, our lives, from uh, our churches, from our ministries. That means that if we don't, if we have Christ, there should be some signs if Christ is there or not. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So he says, "Who opposes and exalts himself?" Uh, you know, do we see a lot of that happening today? That a lot of people are exalting themselves above God. I tell you, I mean, I, 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 I see some churches across this uh, world, not this nation much, but uh, across this world, that the, uh, the, the, their gospel is about money and money and money, and their gospel is about some nonsense. Their gospel is about only prophetics and stuff like that. And, there, and it has nothing to do with true gospel, with repentance. It has nothing to do with... Uh, with serving God and living for God and praying and living holy lives. Uh, so we are hearing a different gospel that the Bible warns us about. So we see a lot of people in exalting themselves. And that could be very much the spirit of Antichrist. So proudly and so uh, instantly above every so-called God or object of worship. So that he actually enters and takes his seat. Listen to this. And take his seat in the temple of God. So I believe that the spirit of Antichrist has already crept in to the body of Christ. In our churches, just like witches, just like any other spirits that have come in. Don't, 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 don't feel that everybody is there for the good of the church. The enemy is infiltrating our camp. 
And the only way that we're going to protect ourselves is by living in the Spirit, by walking in the Spirit, by, by uh, hiding the Word of God in our hearts. Thy Word in my, ha, have I heard in my heart that I may not sin against you. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet. When we are full of God, full of the Spirit of God, then we're able to discern what is of God and what is not. So, and that's the... That's why we're doing the School of Discipleship in January, because we want to equip you for what? To love Christ above everything. So you don't exalt anything else but Christ. And number two, we're going to teach you how to take care of the devil and to how to discern in the body of Christ, because we're living in the last days. And I'm going to say some scary things in a few moments. Uh, so he says, that, and it takes seat in the temple of God publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. Listen to this. He says, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I was telling you these things? See, and this is the problem here. He says, don't you remember that I already told you these things? You see, there is a lot of things that the word of God tells us, but we forget. There's a lot of things, you know, we started a Christian walk knowing to live holy and to repent and all of this thing. But for some reason, our lives are not saying that anymore. So that means that the world got a hold of us. And maybe some of the Antichrist got a hold of us. Because the goal of the spirit of Antichrist is to get Christ out of ourselves. And you know that, and you know what restrains him now, 6, verse 6, and from being revealed. It is so that he will reveal at his own appointed time. So the Spirit of God is restraining him. Uh, verse 7, for, this, for the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority. Here it is. Rebellion against divine authority and, and the coming reign of the lawlessness is already at work. It's already at work. But it is restrained only until he who now restrains it, it is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one, the Antichrist, listen to this, and coming to my scripture, will be revealed. And the Lord Jesus will slay him, praise God, with the breath of his mouth, of his coming. Isn't that amazing? God will wipe him, wipe him out. The Antichrist will be wiped out. So you better be on the right side of the fence when Jesus wipes them out. That we're not on the side of the Antichrist believing these signs and wonders and all of this stuff. This nonsense because of a lack of knowledge and the lack of re revelation and the lack of uh, discernment. But we're on the right side. Maybe suffering a little bit more, but in the side of the truth. But here comes verse 9. This is what God gave me this week. It says, the coming of the Antichrist, the lawless... One is through the activity of Satan. So this Antichrist is coming from the devil himself. Satan attended with great power. Listen to this. Great power. All kinds of counterfeit miracles. And the deceptive signs and false wonders. And he says, all of them lies. I believe that we're experiencing that all over the world now. The Antichrist has succeeded in taking our focus away from the true Christ, which we're going to talk about in a moment, and make us believe in a different Christ, the Christ of prophecy, the Christ of, of uh, supernatural power, and all of because we're going after the power, not the one that has the power. So what happens when we go after the power and not after Christ, then the devil will throw his power in there and make us believe that uh, is from God. But listen to what the Word of God says here. It says all kinds of counterfeits, right? And by unlimited seduction to evil, unlimited. Imagine that. And with all the deception of wickedness for those who are perishing. And here comes. This is a confirmation of what we've been preaching here. It's all from the Lord. Because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel so as to be saved, they were spiritually blind and rejected the truth that will have saved them. Listen to that. I repeat that again. Verse 10, 11. Listen to this. It says, because... They did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel as to be saved. 
the word spiritual. What is Brother John been preaching? That we have rejected the spirit of the living God. We have learned to live without the Holy Spirit in our churches. But now we're talking about the Antichrist. Trying to get Christ out of it. So if, if the Antichrist is trying to get Christ out of it, we're going to talk about the signs now. And then we're going to see what kind of church you go to. And I'm not talking about any particular church. I'm talking the Word of God. And I think that we ought to examine ourselves. We need to examine what we hear. We need to know the Word of God to see if where we are is correct. And I'm not here causing division or anything like that. I'm preaching truth because God wants to rescue you from wasting time elsewhere. So he says here, because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel so as to be saved, they were spiritually blind and they rejected the truth that will have saved them. Because of this, listen to this, because of this, verse 11, God, not the devil, God will send upon them a misleading influence an activity of error and deception so that they will believe the lie here it is you know there's a portion of scripture i don't know right now it just comes to mind a portion of scripture in the bible he says you know that we go after things and god warns them not to then there is a point that god says okay you want to hear you can have it so he will turn us over to what we want for us to find out the outcome of what we want, that it was not good for us. And sometimes we're stubborn before God. And I believe that here we want signs, we want wonders. Identity is, oh, how well I prophesied, or how well I, I, can, I can tell somebody their future, or, 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 or whatever. Hot wash, where is that? Yes, I believe I, I mentioned this many times in the, on the radio. I believe in prophecy. I believe in prophet, but that should be an outcome of living right before God. But what happens, here it is. Because of this, God will send upon them a misleading influence an activity of error and deception so they will believe a lie in order listen to this that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe the truth about what about their sin and the need for salvation through christ but instead took pleasures in unrighteousness so let's stop right here i mean i, I tell you this confirms everything that I've been preaching for the past six months. And, you know, it's been so hard for me to preach what I preach. But I tell you, I'm here with no fear anymore. You know, I mean, people don't like me already uh, for, for sharing what I share. And that's fine. I have to accept that. But I know with all my heart that there are people there that they're saying, Brother John, right on. We're standing behind you. But it's about time that we have the truth come into our region. And I believe that the reason that God has given us this platform, a revival hour here on the radio and in our prayer meetings and discipleship, and we're going to do the same thing in uh, January 13th, every Sunday night. We're going to speak the truth. We had a fellow come in for the first time at our prayer meeting the other day um, uh, that we had on um, in November here just a couple of weeks ago. And he put a post in, in, uh, in uh, Facebook to us, and he says, in over 40 years that he's been going to church in this region, he has never heard so much truth in one night. So much truth. And, you know, and that's so encouraging to me. Because, you know, I know that people don't like me. I know that a lot of leaders probably don't like me uh, because I'm exposing the, the garbage in the church. I'm exposing all of that. But, you know, I mean, somebody has to say it. You know, we're not going in the right direction. I mean, I can see clearly that we have become a lukewarm church. A wishy-washy church. I mean, we're not winning souls. We're not adding to the church daily. We're not doing what we ought to be doing. And I'm sure that there are churches doing so. Praise God. But what I see on television, on YouTube, uh, what I see in, in Canada, in Ontario, in Western Canada, in Eastern Canada, what I see, I tell you, very few. A friend of mine from T-Challenge, a pastor that has been around for many, many years, 
pastoring. He says, John, he says, Canada has fallen to be one of the worst countries in winning people to Christ. One of the worst countries. Imagine that. So that means that we're not winning people to the Lord. And the reason that we're not winning people to the Lord is because we're not equipped. God will not send new converts to your church unless we're ready for it. And how can we be ready? What we preached last week is that we have to, number one, make disciples. Equip the people in the church to make disciples. Equip them in prayer. Equip them in holiness. Equip them in the Word of God. Equip them in evangelism. Equip them, equip them, equip them. Because when they're equipped, then a hundred people can get saved. And if a hundred people get saved, then we have the, 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 the army there in our churches to look after them. And that's what the Bible says, that they added daily to the church. And I'm sure we're not adding daily to the church. So he says here, I'm going back to verse 10. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some tough things. But I mean, it's reality. In my prayer meetings, I have a mask that I have there. I put it on my face and I says, you know, this is the church. We talk with a mask on. We know how to smile. We know how to do the Christi Christian talk and the Christian lingo and how to look and how to let a light shine and all of that stuff. But I say in my prayer meetings, we're taking our mask off. What it, that means is we're going to speak things the way they are. Okay? Things are not violets and roses. Look what's happening to the curriculum of, the, of our schools. Look what's happening to what could happen to the curriculum of the Christian schools. Look what's happening now in, uh, in um, California. They're trying to ban the Bible. Here, all of California is burning. And in the midst of burning, the government right now is trying to pass a bill to ban the Bible in California. So they, they ban the Bible in the schools. And look what's happening in the school. They ban the Bible in, uh, in California. It's already been happening there. So what good is going to come out of that? You know, so they're trying to get God out of everything. That's the spirit of Antichrist in different forms. But the spirit of Antichrist is not only in California. The spirit of Antichrist is in the church. Because when he comes, he will have a seat in the temple of God. And for, in order for him to have a seat in the temple of God, he must have some followers in the temple of God that will believe in him. And it's already happening right now. So, the Bible here in verse 10, he says, Because they did not welcome the love of the truth of the gospel, so as to be saved, they were spiritually blinded and rejected the truth that will have saved them. You know what? I'm preaching the truth, and a lot of you get so mad at me. A lot of you love me for telling the truth. And, and I fear for those that reject the truth that I'm preaching. You know, I had a meeting with some pastors uh, just last week. Um, and I said to them, I said, you know what? Nobody can say that I'm not scriptural because I'm preaching the Word of God. And it's not what I'm against, it's what I'm for. I'm for the Word of God. But he says, you did not welcome the love of the truth. You see, what I preach here on Revival Hour is the truth. It's the hard truth. I tell it the way it is. I have no fear. But now let's go. As I close this program, here's going to get a little bit crazy. I put a post in about prayer right now. I encourage uh, pastors and leaders to read the book of Ian e. Bounds on prayer. And, uh, and, and he says, he talks about prayer, that, you know, that if the pulpit is not praying, there is no power. Okay, if I was a pastor of a church and I have a prayer life, would my church have a prayer life? 100%. If I didn't have a prayer life as a leader of a church, would the church have a prayer life? Most likely won't. So, is Christ in our church. So if somebody says, oh, you know, Brother John is pastoring a church over here in uh, Ontario. Right away, you will know that, that the style of Pastor John, and they say, you know, what kind of church will Pastor John pastor? Oh, man, 
it will be a church preaching the gospel, preaching repentance, preaching holiness, preaching the truth of God, because that will be a sign of me being at the church. Correct? So now, what is the sign of Christ being at your church? Number one, the church was birthed in prayer. Jesus make intercession for us 24-7. So Christ is 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 the is is the is a God of prayer that if he is in a church that means that, that church has to be a house of prayer he says you have made it a den of thieves and he says and this should be called the house of prayer so if there is no prayer in your church guess what your leadership is not praying come on I'm taking my mask off if there is no preaching on repentance What does the Bible say? Two people. John the Baptist. His first message was what? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Right? Repent. Then in the Bible he says that Jesus' first message. What was his first message? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that means that John the Baptist and Jesus himself when he walked in this word. First words was repentance. So that means that if Christ is in our church, then there should be a focus on repentance in turning people from living unto ourselves and turning the people unto God, right? To live for God. And that's why uh, Revival Hour wants to start this School of Discipleship for 20 weeks in January. So that way we learn how to love God above everything else and how to take care of the devil number two and how to make disciples because we are called to make disciples so number three how strong is your discipleship course in your church is your church making disciples meaning are they multiplying themselves do you see more than just one or two preachers on the pulpits do you see different giftings being left up being acknowledged and being used do you see the, 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 the evangelists coming in, the, uh, the apostles, the prophets, all of these things? You, do you see the fivefold ministries? Because if Christ is in there, then God will provide all these offices, all this gift them within a body because that's the way we make disciples. Because then the leaders, the, the, the pastors, the prophets, the teacher, they, according to Ephesians chapter 4, they have to train the people for the work of the ministry. That means train them not to suffer. Train them to live from glory to glory. Train them to, to cancel them from living from misery to misery, from trial to trial, from chaos to chaos. That's the purpose of discipleship. And what happens when we disciple people properly then what happens they will disciple others properly and that's the multiplication that jesus was talking about making disciples of all nations and that's the command of god so i can go on there has to be holiness there have to be all of these things part of a church and that is a sign of christ being in your church now you have a decision if, if christ is not in your church you better pray him into your church and if your Christ is not welcome in your church, read Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 on. Because he says there that if we reject, if we don't welcome the truth of the gospel, the full gospel, what the gospel is this? Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, what the Peter said, repent, number one, then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And number three, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Every message from Jesus, John the Baptist, Peter, all of them, they said the word repent. So we have to repent and embrace the word of God. You see, when we repent, then we understand that we're not our own, that we belong to him. He purchased us. He bought us. So uh, I tell you, the church is not in a good place. But you know what? The reason that this message is going forth is because God is preparing the church. And I, and I please, and I pray for you. There are remnant out there that believe everything that I'm saying. Where in the world are you? We're calling praying meetings and you're, and you're more loyal to, to uh, your surroundings than you're loyal to the move of God. 
Wake up. Don't be wimpy in your, in your relationship with God. I mean, if you know that there is a praying meeting out there in the city that, it, that has a cause of bringing down the strongholds of the devil, the strongholds of witchcraft, the strongholds of all the spirits that are coming against the church, and you sit at home because if you, if you endorse this ministry, somebody's going to come down on you. Shame on you. You're not fit to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shame on you. You're not supporting me. You're supporting the cause that God has called me for. The anointing of Almighty God is upon me to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. We need to be ready. We need to repent and embrace him and to understand that we're no longer our own. Now we belong to him. And now that we live, let us live not unto ourselves, but let us live unto him who died and rose again. God bless you. I love you. I can't wait for next week's program. Don't forget, January 5th, January 13th. Mark that on your calendar. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.